And uh, if not the my favorite period, but uh, oh Lord, you're shedding like crazy. <laughs> Um, but uh, you know, he's he's just cool. He's always calm, collected. I always like him because, especially the older version, he's very um, wise. Some of the allocators, yes. Yeah. And so, like, because if you watch like the Rebels, the episode that I keep on raving about that sure. he comes back in, yeah. he's very much like that in that in that episode where, yeah. like, everything he says is very poignant and very kind of almost philosophical in a way sure. you know and um, that's what i like about it because it's just like i like that he's just he's like a wise old monk yeah which obviously that's kind of what the jedi were based off of mm -hmm. so it's like but he just he hammers that and he really embodies that and this that episode he really kind of does that and you know in this series he's not quite there yet he, you could tell the past 10 years it takes place 10 years after order 66 yeah <clears throat> so um you know time has definitely gone by for a period like a long period of time the kids are now 10 years old now yeah luke and leia yeah so um but yeah i mean overall i guess without going super deep into spoilers now um you know i like it i'm interested to see where it goes um there's some things which we'll dive into i won't into the spoiler section where I kind of feel like it might fuck with the continuity a little bit. Yeah, well, I mean, when we'll talk about it, bring them up, and I can see what I know in my own head and see if there's any points of resolution. Yeah. Um, I agree with you, it's really good. Uh, I probably have too much fanboy in me in the fact that uh, after watching the second episode, because it was a two-episode premiere, I almost bumped everything on Disney Plus below this off of two episodes. Mm. And like I said, it, it might be a little more... A little bit of fanboy type of ask, but um, the one scene that kind of drove the buy-in, which we'll, I'll touch on later, kind of made me just dive into the universe hard. Okay. So that's that's my feeling on it. Um, you know, I, clearly in my head right now, I think Loki was I think number one, and you know I liked Moon Knight. It wasn't as great as some of the others. But like I would say, subsequently lower. You know, yeah. while I really like WandaVision and stuff like that, but uh, in terms of the Star Wars miniseries, like Mandalorian season one was cool and two was interesting, but I think it's already better than Book of Boba and Mandalorian just off of these two episodes. But it's probably yeah. with Hayden Christensen and Ewan McGregor being in the series. Yeah. I mean, I, I yeah. I mean, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll stop it there. Because, <laughs> like, uh, but, uh, you know, yeah, it is good. I would say it definitely is one of the best Star Wars shows, period. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's dethroned Mandalorian for me necessarily, but yes, um, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> too early to say on that. Sure. But um, but yeah, I, I do agree. I think it's great. Um, I'm interested to see where they take it. Yeah. Um, you know, they they definitely didn't shy away from pulling all the heavy hitters. Yep. So, um, we'll be interested to see what they do with that, um, but we'll go into spoilers Wee now, get into that section. Um, so, you know, generally, uh, you know, like we said, it takes place 10 years afterwards. Um, you know, we kind of see like a small window glimpse into his daily life, which is boring. He works yes. for some kind of butcher or butcher or yeah, something like that. Yeah, butcher shop, essentially. Yeah, so he basically, they, there's like a beached like a shark yeah sand shark whale thing yeah so um which was neat you know that they, they did a lot of practical effects which was cool with yeah. that um they had you a know droid that was punching oh yeah yeah, yeah. Gong. but yeah so they, they you know there's little things in there there's a little little touches with um you know the aliens in it um yeah. which you know is is neat uh, you know they they kind of keeping it in that universe. There's a good amount of humanoids that, you know, because you see, like, you know, humans in the bar and this and that, but mm -hmm. you, you see a lot more human actors. Uh, I mean, you've got alien fan favorites. You have Jawas, you know, Jawas who are stealing mm -hmm. his stuff and returning it to him. Um, yeah. And stuff like that. The interesting thing with his butcher job is, like, he's stealing meat, yet the people don't care. Or, like, he's doing it secretly, mind you. He's doing yeah, whatever. Yeah, I'd say he's doing it secretly. But it just seems like, you know, it, it seems like he gets a little more of a slice each time we see him do it. Yeah. You know, so. 
Yeah. Well, and plus, you know, he gets stiffed on pay. Yeah. So it's like, you know, and then he, and then you notice he starts taking more of it yeah. after that. And I'm like, ah. So, you know, he <clears throat> he's very, he's a nomad. Yeah. I mean, he's just basically, which is fine. I like, like, I think the way they portrayed it and the direction that they went with the story about him basically kind of becoming detached from everything becoming a hermit yeah a lost hermit if you will yeah, yeah so it, it does pay off like that um they're kind of going a la like yoda sort of i think a little bit sure where he's you know yoda went kooky but whereas obi-wan just kind of becomes like a curmudgeon <laughs> yeah a cynic well and that's the thing like no offense to yoda but you know uh two and a half foot alien versus green alien that you've only seen three of a species in the entire Star Wars galaxy uh, canon at this point, I think. I, there could be more. Uh, versus a, a humanoid who could easily dye their hair, you know, get, get put a scar on the face or whatever. Um, but clearly they're in remote areas and are not touched by the Empire. Uh, and I think it's easier for Yoda to do an uninhabited area that has a strong dark side, so it's covering, masking his horse sensitivity. Yeah. And then on top of that, all the creatures, so they're not like raising alarms and telling them to go out to that planet and blowing it up. Yeah. Um, you know, like you said, it continues after Order 66, you see a glimpse of uh, younglings fighting, or not fighting, training, doing like a Tai Chi type of thing, and then the, 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 uh, the, all the Jedi Masters and all the people just getting slaughtered, except for them, this small group gets run away. Um, there is a rumor that one of the uh, younglings is African American female who would be the th is it third sister, or whatever the, the oh. is her, and that's why yeah. she has such a hatred for the Jedi. Uh, being cowards and this and that. Um, well, the, I mean, all the Inquisitors are old uh, ex-Jedi. Are ex-Jedi or have some force sensitivity because the Grand Inquisitor used to be one of those uh, Jedi, uh, Jedi... He was a Jedi, but then he turned into a Jedi security guard, the, the white guy with the two double-edged yellow, yellow... The Diddy? Okay. Yeah, he I, was I, one of those. Because I remember his story a little yeah. bit, but... Yeah. Because I remember... Because he, I know he was a pretty high-up guy. And then he ended up hating the Jedi, and I can't remember exactly how he hated it because he was one of the judges or one of the people <laughs> in the prosecution for uh, Ahsoka Tano, and he was illegally uh, charged with doing something against the Jedi Order. It's in uh, uh, Clone Wars, which okay. we both haven't watched the entirety of. Yeah, yeah. okay. But that gives you a little more extrapolation there. Yeah, I mean, you know, with <clears throat> you know, with the big bads in this one, like the Grand Inquisitors in there, which is. Neat to see. I mean, I've only seen him in the comics. Yeah, I've seen. In, oh, good. Seen him in, in in parts of episodes for Rebels. Or oh, okay, episodes. yeah, yeah. yeah I, I mean, I did see him in Rebels, of course. Yeah. But, um, I don't really care to watch that show. But um, the uh, the other one was, uh, you know, the third sister, which I think she's in something else too. I think she's in a comic or something. Like that. I want to say she was in the video game Fallen Order possibly yeah but um but anyway um so yeah so you know it's interesting that they're doing all of that the thing I kind I, I'm finding a little bit here is is it's like I hate like uh, I, I mean I guess I, I'll touch on it briefly we can talk about it more later but I don't like that they're going back in time a lot and messing with the storylines because I like again I just kind of feel like it's going to muck up the the continuity of a lot of stuff and so you know with this you know with the inquisitors like yeah i know they could just reload and make new ones basically but it's like the thing i find interesting is you know up until new hope like the inquisitors stopped existing ceased to exist yes. at that point <clears throat> and we don't really know why yes so um so that's something where I'm kind of like, okay, like, what happened, what happened there, and um, things of that nature. So there's, you know, the Grand Inquisitor, and he basically plays, the, the actor who portrays him is pretty good at it, I think. He basically has the, the tonality that I read, right. <laughs> like, what I felt I read. So there's good, and then the third sister is just a, a bitch, honestly. Like, you know, she's just mean, sour, you clearly could tell she has something against Obi-Wan for some reason. Sure. Because she constantly says stuff. Um, I like her character. I like... This is where... 
and this is where it's great. Mm -hmm. you, you know, one one when is a villain great when you love to hate them? Yeah, and this person you definitely love to hate. Uh, I agree. Um, it's also interesting, you know, in terms of continuity. So, like, uh, in the toward the end of the second episode, she stabs Grand Inquisitor in the chest. Yeah. So, like, is he dead? But then you see in other clips of the show that he's alive and walking around. Oh, he is. Yes. So wow. I assume he's not dead because he actually had, plays a, a fundamental role in Rebels. And Rebels, though, is after. Is it though? Yes. I thought Rebels was before her. After, because if you look at the aging of Ahsoka Tano, she's like a teenager in Clone Wars, and then Rebels, she is a young adult. So the timeline is. Uh, so well, I don't remember. Uh, New Hope is like. Uh, Five years after. No. Yes. Like, he was like 26, right? In like in You're the, right then. Okay, cuz cuz I think Rebel I think we looked it up last time. I think Rebels takes place 5 years before New Hope. New Hope. Okay. So this that would mean that it takes place 5 years after yeah. Obi-Wan so, Kenobi. I assume that he was more he was wounded but or something comes up of it. There, there has to be an explanation. Yeah. Because you can't just kill him and then it's, it's fine unless there's a promotion system, right? But even still, to have him in two episodes and just, just rampantly kill him is kind of like, alright, cool. Um, my thing is, is, I assume why she hates Obi-Wan so much is because all of the ones that you assume did not die, who are not confirmed to be dead, Obi-Wan and Yoda are the two strongest Jedi, right? Yeah. They abandoned the Jedi Order and yep. they fled and, had, and, and, and hid away. So I assume if this particular person was a youngling in the intro scene, and if this particular person is hating the Jedi because you know she was probably taken away from her family, or she was found to be force sensitive, pulled away from wherever she was, trained all this hoo-ha about yep. being a good person and, and fighting for the right cause, and then, lo and behold, your two fundamental people, which, mind you, Mace Window could be alive, but he got thrown off, you know, Coruscant Tower, like, and has one arm, so he, he could be alive, he could be dead. I assume he's alive because they're talking about putting him in Ahsoka, uh, but those two oh, particular, really? yes. Yeah. So those two particular people are your leaders, but goodbye, we don't care about you, and so she could be feel like she's betrayed. <laughs> or, I have a, a mild sneaking suspicion, which it could be horribly misplaced, that she is playing off this rage to try to link Obi-Wan with other Jedi and being like someone to... Because there were six of them in that shot. And I would assume if they got oh, out the of there... Children. Yeah, if they got out together, and they all practice being a, you know, a Jedi, there's a group of them somewhere and they're trying to be protect themselves. Well, it's funny because like, I thought about it. And because one I thought was Cal Calcascus, which is the guy from Fallen Order, right? Who now they announced Survivor, and he's the main character in that. Yeah. So. Um, and he's going to be played by the person he has his voice. Yeah, it's well. That's why they made him look like him too. Yeah. Because there there has been rumblings that eventually he's going to make it into live action. Sure. And that he's also part of what helps resurrect um, the Jedi Order, like the underground Jedi Order. Right, so kind of like a Mandalorian yeah. Jedi Order. But, and well, yeah, but like that's the thing that I kind of feel like they're mucking up the waters again too much, because right. it's like, how, how could something like that exist in the continuity of the original trilogy? Yeah. It, you know what I mean? I know the universe is huge, sure. but goddamn, it ain't that big. Yeah, but you realize that if Calcastus is alive before the battle, before Yavin, right? And the Empire and the Rebels are doing their thing, the Empire are not looking for them. And if their own thing is to keep secret, be quiet, and to just do their thing, and build numbers, they're probably in a pocket way the fuck out in the outer rim. Like, way, way out there. Sure. And then also, because Ahsoka's around, Ezra's still alive technically, you yeah. know, there is a, a faction somewhere. You know, maybe Ezra and his... He, you'll have to watch Rebels, but he goes somewhere. Maybe that place that he goes, he finds a place where everyone can be safe. I don't know. 
Well, oh, the, and there, there is the that one planet that Ahsoka knew of yeah. that they took Grogu to, oh, the to little, meditate, yeah, to find Luke. I think is what it was, wasn't it? He was trying to find any any Jedi. Oh, that's right. That's and right. Luke answered the call. Yeah. and was like, "What is this? I hear." Yeah. Well, am I Jedi? That's struggling. Like, yeah. Well, then, see, that's the other thing too, because like this is where I feel like they're kind of mucking up the waters a little bit because it's like. Force users could feel other force users, and they even they, they should. But if you're strong enough to mask it, not entirely, you can. Because sure. if you think about it, like I, I was they... watching Jedi this morning, mind you. Oh, do we, you, wait, wait, what? Return of the Jedi. Oh, okay. And Emperor Palpatine could not feel that Luke was on the uh, moon planet of Endor. Yeah. And even still, Leia is force sensitive. Now she wasn't trained. Right. If you could feel him, and he could feel that. You know, X, Y, and C is here. I assume Vader was kind of masking some of that for Vader because then Palpatine asks, it's like, you know, I don't feel him. Are you, know, are you feeling something that you're not telling me type of thing? So I think it depends on the scenario, but it's also like voodoo magic, right? You don't know exactly how all of it works yet. True. Because up until uh, the Force, not the Force Awakens, which one's the, the original uh, video game that was really cool where you brought down the, uh, the Star Destroyer? Yeah, that was uh, Force Unleashed. Yeah. You didn't think anyone could do the lightning other than Palpatine, and then you could have Yoda absorb the lightning now. Well, I mean, but prior to that, at that time, yeah. that was prior to Lucas selling off his rights. Sure. At that point in time, there were actually a few yeah. lightning users. Sure. Um, a fucking guy from Jedi Outcast actually learned how to use Force lightning. So, I mean, essentially it's just like, at this point, they could just throw a dart on a wheel of, like, powers and like, this is the power? And they can run with it a little bit, and they can insert it how they seem fit. Now, I understand what you're saying because, like, there's a lot of continuity things that are just changing so rapidly now because of this. But also, if you think about it in four, five, and six, as much as George Lucas says that he wanted Luke to be Vader's son and Leia to be brother and sister, he threw in some of this stuff at some point just because, like, you know, this would, this is more riveting. I'm going to do this. Yeah. You know? Well, and there's even, and that's why. I, <clears throat> You know, I could call bullshit on the father thing because the director of Re Re um, Return of the Sith. Revenge of the Sith? No, not Revenge of the Sith, sorry. Um, Return of the Jedi? No. Empire Strikes Back? Yes. Yeah. Empire Strikes Back, they, in that movie, and that director, I forget his name, it's like, it starts with a K. Yeah. I'll throw it there. Um, but he actually came out and said that it was actually his fucking idea. His brainchild, basically. He had the idea, mm -hmm. pitched it to George, and it was like a midnight hour kind of a pitch. And yeah. George was like, "Oh my fucking god, I love it!" Yeah. And so that's why, like, when George tries to take credit that he had this idea that Darth Vader was the father of Luke the entire time, I know it's bullshit. I thought the Japanese movies that George drew upon for Star Wars, there was a scene where a character's protagonist or enemy was the father. And that's why they stole from him. Well, supposedly, like, apparently at one point, they actually were considering that um, Vader was the parent of somebody. Mm -hmm. But, um, like, it was one a singular character. Luke and Leia weren't siblings. Um, I forgot what else, but, yeah, I have the actual original comic. Sure. They printed it, like, back when Marvel bought Star Wars... Mm -hmm. they, they, use... they they basically turned it into a comic book yeah. with all the original script and everything intact. I didn't read it because <laughs> a lot of people say it's bad. <laughs> right. <laughs> they're, they're like, there's a reason why it was No, yeah, my yeah. childhood. Yeah. So I, I'm kind of like, I'm like, well, I'm just going to, uh, like, I bought them for collectors. Actually, I should check. But I, 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 supposedly, those are pretty valuable now. Yeah. But, um, well, I mean, you know, discuss in the comments below. You know, just let us know what you think of or what the theories are that you've heard or seen. And, and even include links, because we like to get learned, right? So yeah. um, feel free to throw that stuff up there. And not to just jump too far down a rabbit hole and talk about all their Star Wars instead of the miniseries. Which, yeah, let, there will be some continuity issues, and we will... I mean, how couldn't you? Yeah. Uh, the problem is, is it's kind of like the Marvel Syndrome. You yeah. Know, it's like you can't really talk about one Without aspect of it, you know. did, did you? Was there any other points of continuity that you haven't mentioned just yet? I mean, I, I guess like, well, let's go chrono chronological here. I guess the yeah, yeah, so, first yeah. episode, but yeah. like, I don't want to keep on yeah, no. getting too out of order. 
But like, I don't know. I mean, you know, with with him finally kind of, you know, getting in touch, Organa, yeah, uh, Bail Organa reaches out to him mm-hmm. because there's some, you know, um, bounty hunters uh, like stalking Leia, Leia, and um, they take her. Um, and flea, 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 flea plays with the main, the main bad guy, and um, but you end up finding out later that you know they, she was hired by the third sister. Yeah, but they were hired by. They the were, sister. yeah. And so, like the the first episode is heavier, yeah, obviously because they're setting up. A, I think it was over an hour long, whereas yeah. the second episode was only forty, yeah, something, something like that. that. So it was short, but I mean, so for that, like. Um, I did not know that Leia was going to make an appearance in this series. No, I didn't because, either. Because, like you said, the continuity is is like Leia in the hologram in Episode Four is like you serve my father in the Clone Wars, and she couldn't because she's not going to be dumb. She's not going to be like, and you saved my ass in Obi Wan. Yeah, she's not going to say that, but he's like, you also saved me because for her to forget this completely, that a she flew, yeah, and then b that this person. So I can understand that continuity. That is one of the issues that I see through. Go ahead. Oh no! I, I, well, I'm wondering because they did it and they, they kind of hinted at it. I don't know if you caught it, but remember at that point when I forget who it was entirely, but there was a part where there was three characters and they were trying to go after him or, he, or, or Obi Wan tried to. He was doing something with them, and he was. Trying not to use his Force his fo- as well because he, he, so you know mind on, control. Thing. So it was on the roofs where he had that rapper guy shooting at him, and then that uh, that droid. It was robot. like in, it was inside. I can't remember when it was, but there was a point when you see it later. He refrains from doing it, and then he walks away from it. But then later on, he actually then does it because he comes to terms with being a Jedi again. Right. And he does use the mind Jedi mind trick on those three characters, but if you look at them, their minds are fucked up. Mm. Like he scrambled their brains. Uh, well, was it because of the drugs that he dropped? Is it it's those three characters, like Flea and his two henchmen, or is it two completely other people? Maybe it was them. Because they remember he dropped the spice in that room, put the mask on, and snuck out, and everyone's high as hell. That's right. Maybe that's what it was. Um, but yeah, I don't know. But like, I I, I I thought of it. I was like, oh fuck. Well, I mean, that's a good point because like he's been training about Qui with Qui Gon stuff, right? Yeah. With that said, and as time goes on, you can become a po- more powerful Jedi. That's why Count Dooku was so powerful, and clearly Palpatine killing Cipher Diaz and whatever it is, yeah. and, and learning other things. I would definitely say that uh, to put like a Professor X like mind block over that particular memory is feasible. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Like, yeah. maybe they'll go that route yeah. where, you know, and that's kind of, because that's where I'm thinking. I'm like, how in the fuck are they, because they're definitely teasing it. Right. How in the fuck are they going to have Obi-Wan and Vader meet? Right. Because up until New Hope, when Vader finally sees him, he's like, oh, it's been a while, old friend, and yeah. everything else like that. And it's like, clearly... I mean, now, granted, yes, it, the, at this point, or, uh, from the point in Obi-Wan and the current state of the show to that point is 16, an eight-year... No, 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 because <clears throat> when, when Obi-Wan found Luke, Luke was 18. I thought he was 26. I don't think so. I'm we'll, pretty sure we'll look about that. that. Um, because he we're, just we're turned eighteen. Fighting. No, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm pretty sure he was eighteen. Sure, they both were. So either way, Leia at least Luke. eight years or something. That effect. Yeah. So basically, if well, it was eight years, then I, I mean, well, I, well that I, actually makes sense because they say that Leia was like nineteen years old. Although I think Carrie Fisher was eighteen shooting episode one. We'll look it up. We'll yeah. Look it up. But either way, I'm but pretty yeah. sure they were eighteen. Because yeah, it's the way that he phrases an episode. It's like it's been a long time, old friend. And you assume that in this Obi Wan series, they're going to fight at some point, right? And I think Obi Wan again is going to get the better half of, or better of him, yeah. Because even though like this is the first time he's battling as a, a, a majority cybernetic person, the fighting between Rogue One to Episode Four, where he's just slaughtering these people, and yes, he, none of these people have Force sensitivity. But the way that he's ferociously slaughtering everyone versus well, how he's fighting Obi Wan, unless it's just pure respect, just making sure that, and he's being very cautious not to 
jump in the air, flip, and lose his legs again, or something that effect. Could be, yeah. And I know they're, they're limited well, to technology be. back in that day. Sure. Well, and I think that's a lot of the the issue of what, why, like, you know, like, lightsaber fighting in the original trilogy was very underwhelming. Right. It was just basically them doing this, you know, so it's like... You, you saw the true ferocity when you hit episode six, and you're like, oh my god, this is amazing. Like, you watch episode one, like, what? Did yeah, just... yeah. I mean, there was even a point when, infamously, like, that, um, you know, uh, uh, Obi-Wan's lightsaber actually went out in the shot, yeah. like, because he pointed the downward, directly, and, you can see and then, it, like, it cuts out for a split second, yeah. but, um, but yeah, you know, it's actually right before Vader kills him, yeah. but, uh, but yeah, you know, it's just, it's interesting because, I don't know, I, I, I know they'll handle it in a way where, or they'll just retrofit yeah. this bitch to make it make sense, which, fine. They'll, they'll, they'll puzzle fit it with the slam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hammer it in there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, you know, I'm not hating it. I, I'm just kind of like, I'm like... Ah, You're I, apprehensive I'm, to love it. Well, no, it, I'm just kind of like, I'm, I'm hoping... I, I just wish they would fucking remove themselves from the original Skywalker trilogy. So that, that's what I was going to get into. So, they have set up a possibility to make the Star Wars universe so much more interesting than what 7, 8, and 9 are. Yes. They, they saw what 7, 8, and 9 are. Uh, there are definitely some highlights in terms of certain actors and some parts that were memorable, but overall it was just an extreme disappointment in what my mind. Okay? <laughs> what fart is, uh, she says. The thing is, is, and that's what the Mandalorian and Grogu is, because it is at post episode 6, but not at episode 7, but also they can take it in a different direction. Yeah. But the thing is, is what they're doing, unfortunately, is they're going back to do that Obi-Wan movie that they never did because they canceled because they got afraid when Solo did so horribly. Because oh. originally it was supposed to be like Solo, right. Obi-Wan, and a Boba Fett movie. And so they're, they're clearly putting that into effect now. But the thing is... Well, is, are you? I bet they're not going to do the movie now. They're not. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not saying they're making a movie. I think this is their... We wanted to touch upon this, and we also know that people love these characters enough that no matter... How embarrassingly bad, embarrassingly bad that they could make this. Yeah, they'll watch it. But also because they have Favreau now, <clears throat> yeah. he's putting it into a tier that it's going to be watchable. It's going to be entertaining. Oh, not oh, who's the other guy? I don't want to discredit him. Filoni. Yeah, Filoni. Yeah, Dave Filoni. So those two people at the head. Now the thing is, is like, it's it's hard, right? So you have your cash cow of these Skywalkers, right? And you have. Grogu and what else you could make it. And I didn't read all the updates on uh, Celebration that was like last week. Because there's a lot of oh, yeah. uh-huh. nothing nothing like out of the well like holy shit, yeah. like we didn't see it coming, you know. Yeah. But that's the thing is like this, a Soka I, show, you know. Yeah. I think what's gonna happen is is they're gonna develop <laughs> Grogu, they're gonna develop this under tier of Jedi, and then they're gonna make a ten, eleven, twelve, which is not gonna be part of the Skywalker saga, but they'll numerically Inserted just so there's a there's an understanding of what's going on. Eh. Well, supposedly, well now they officially have announced, but I knew it was going to happen anyway. By the Ryan Johnson's trilogy is officially canceled. officially on hold, indefinitely on hold, and I was like, I'm like, I mean, we all fucking knew that was going to happen. The but guy I botched this Last Jedi so badly, and well, it's like, wait, well, I thought he was in charge of eight, not nine. Oh yeah, that is eight. Yeah, but I did he. He was the director of the whole thing and quit, or what happened? To no, no. So basically, what happened was is Ryan Johnson, who I generally respect. Yeah. Looper was a decent film. Um, What's his other big one? There was another one that he did, and I saw it. Now I can't think of it, but anyway, um, he, he's a good director. But he's one of those. He's always been a director that's been in charge of his own craft, mm-hmm. and and I think. Kathleen Kennedy really liked him. She she even said after she saw Looper, she knew he was the guy. And I was like, okay, like, <clears throat> have you seen Looper? I know the premise, but no, okay. I've watched it. it. It's a good movie. Yeah. Um, you know, it, there are some things where you're kind of like, eh, time travel thing doesn't quite add up. Sure. But, um, you know, it does its job. And so, um, but it's when she saw that movie she's like ah that's the guy because at that point you know um jj said he just wanted to do the one movie and step back sure. and do other projects yeah which totally understandable yeah and um and so ryan johnson came on and then it, 
but the thing was is she said she she Kathleen Kennedy literally went on record and said that she just let him do whatever the fuck he wanted. Yeah. And that was the problem. Right. And the other problem too was is he started writing Last Jedi before the script for fucking Force Awakens was even completed. Mm. And the final scene in Force Awakens was actually recorded after the fact because Ryan Johnson wanted to incorporate some story elements that he, that J.J. didn't put into the movie. Mm. And so the, he, he asked J.J. to go back, re-record these scenes so it would make sense for his movie. Interesting. And so this was just the debauchery that was this, the stupidity behind the writing of this film. I don't understand. Like, when you go back and you look at it and you, you see what they did, it makes you want to pull your hair out because you're like, how in the hell did they, how in the fuck did they think that they, they were going to make a good product? Right. Because it's, it blows my mind. It's like, you literally wrote a sequel before the first movie's story was done. Right. Like, that makes no sense. No, I get it. I, so the thing is, is like with, I mean, not to jump down that wormhole, but like, you know, clearly there's Sour Graves with Brian Johnson now, he's out of, <laughs> out of it. Sour Graves yeah. here. <laughs> and then, uh, what else was there? Um, the Rogue One uh, director, you know, put that on hold because she got busy with a different project. It was a lady, I forget her name. Yeah, I forget her name. Um, but either way, I mean, it, it, those will be touched upon uh, probably on a later episode for our, our sake, um, just kind of reel it back in for Obi-Wan. Um, I mean, I, I kind of feel like, you know, it's... I guess what, what my point is, is I feel like they're on track now, and honestly, they have a universe that is literally the the... the the possibilities are almost fucking endless. Right. And it's like, they don't have to choose one period of time in this universe because there's the Old Republic. Yep. You know, there's, ooh, shit. Why don't, why don't you fast forward? Go yep. forward in time a little bit. Like, where Rogu's and now an adult or something like that. Right. Like, has established, like, an underground Jedi order or, fuck it, maybe the Jedi don't exist anymore and he's created his own like thing right um, you know it's like that's the thing that I wish they would do or like I mean they have Jedi Outcast did you ever play that game so basically it's it it takes place during I think it's like five years after the fall of the Empire mm -hmm. where, where the Jedi are trying to come back to the way that they were but they of course there's still uh, dark Jedi in the universe and this guy, his name's Kyle Katar. Kyle was a, is a Jedi. He's training under Luke, I think. It's been a minute since I played it. <laughs> and um, he basically, during that time, I think his wife actually gets murdered. And he actually goes down the path of the dark side for a little bit. And that's how he learns Force Lightning. Mm -hmm. Because he actually embodies the dark side for a little bit. Sure. Um, and it's like, why, why, like, how, how do they not have a character like that by now? Like, one that is a broken human being, because that's what everybody loves nowadays. They right. don't like, I mean, yeah, you know, everybody likes the heroic, like, the never does, guy. never does bad sort of a thing, but it's like, we've had nothing but that with Star Wars. Yeah. I think it's time to kind of go go down a different path and say all right this guy is kind of a you know the gray jedi right i i think like you said you know you can go anywhere and they're on the right track i think 2023 for the star wars cinematic universe is going to be the setup you know the setup for what will be the embodiment of the next five years and the fact that they're hopefully going to go this is the skywalker saga we're going to pull things here and then pull things here from the timeline and flesh that stuff out and make it not necessarily all link up, but you can see other things and times and see what's going on. Yeah. Um, so we'll have to just wait and see. Um, you know, Obi Wan's been doing really good, great. A couple minor notes that I wanted to. Just oh yeah, add. go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, you're good. Um, you didn't see any uh, Jedi lightsabers ignited, minus Order sixty six. So yeah. it's very interesting. The it's it's almost like the the way that they wanted to frame it is that light that burning fire gets completely extinguished at that moment and you could have easily had Obi-Wan ignite his lightsaber to fight the third sister sure. or do something but you, they reframed it just to show how 
powerful and menacing this dark side cloud is now over everything. And you're waiting for that moment, you know, because not only do you know from the stories, or at least I know, that when uh, Hayden and Ewan would practice, they would each make the, the lightsaber noise when they fought. No, really. They had to tell them to stop because it was getting in the shot. And like, no, really. <laughs> stuff like that. That's funny. Um, beyond that, uh, that's going to be interesting when he finally ignites the lightsaber. Secondarily, um, Kamal... I don't know what's his last name. The, the, oh, the Indian gentleman. From, yeah, yeah, um, from uh, Eternals and Eternals all that. And, and, uh, uh, Silicon Valley yeah. and all that. Yeah, so, he's... You, that was kind of a cool little uh, surprise too. Yeah. I like that. I thought he was actually a Jedi, but then I like watching it. Just like his back and suppressing buttons and just like whatever his his. He's a con is. artist. Yeah. yeah, I was um, like, I was like, ah. But the funny thing is, is like uh, there is the the triple threat in that I that I dubbed, which is you know Marvel Cinematic Universe, uh, Star Wars Universe, and then a Disney Princess. Your, your three power hitters in terms of movies. So. Uh, the girl who played Mulan's voice, who played Fennec Shan, and played yes. the girl in Agents of Shield, um, Lin, right? Ming, Ming, Ming Na Wen. Yes. You know, so usually it's kind of uh, ladies in that that particular portrayal role, but you are, have so many people now crossing over in both aspects. Um, and you can even, you know, if you're thinking about a really big series, you can encompass Game of Thrones, even hypothetically or whatever. But you know, like we said, so this gentleman. Um, Kamal is in both Marvel and, and, and Star Wars universe. Um, who else do you have? I mean, there's a few others. Oh, did, oh, go ahead. No, I was thinking someone else. I was gonna say I, I'm like there, there, there's, there's not any major ones, but yeah, yeah, yeah not yet. But uh, I'm sure there'll be some more bleed over too. But yeah, it's, it's, it's inter- for me. I feel. Like the show's the show's really good. The mm. uh, ten year old Leia is adorable. Yeah, she was a quite the star. The actress, in the show. yeah, the actress who ever played her was. I mean, you know, there was moments where I was kind of like, yeah, I could see she broke character there. She said something else that made her famous. I'll look it up. Really? Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, but you know, she she still like the moments where she really was able to kind of shine. You saw it. You know, and I can only imagine how hard it is to get a ten-year-old to act. Right. So, but um, yeah, I mean, she was really good, very sweet. Like the, dy- the father-daughter dynamic between her and Obi-Wan was kind of cool. Um, but um, the guy who plays Bail Organa, I can never remember. Smith. Yes, thank you. I fucking love that guy. He, like his his dad talks with Leia were fucking phenomenal. Right. Like that. Um. And you, you could kind of see how, how Leia develops into Leia. Yeah. Like, she's 10 years old and she's already super smart. And uh, it's interesting because you could kind of see them how they were as children. Because they're they're both very rambunctious as kids. Right. She was in Bird Box. She was in Oh, the daughter. Yes. yes. So, um, but yeah, it's 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 it was fun seeing, like, Luke. Like, Luke's playing hooky with, you know, Uncle... Ben? ben, right? No, no. Uncle no, Will, no. Peru and Owen. Owen, Owen. Uncle, Owen. Uncle Owen. So Uncle <laughs> Owen, you know, he's he's like sitting there trying to find Luke, and Luke's like hiding, acting like he's like on a speeder bike or something like that. Pod racing. Is that what it is? I would assume. I would assume maybe. Yeah, yeah I guess. Um, <clears throat> interesting things also, you know, returning actors Owen and Peru from uh, Revenge of the Sith. Yep. Uh, they reprise their roles. Um, We'll see. The other nod was Obi Wan cares a lot about Luke, and he feels like he, since Yoda told him to stay on Tatooine and keep in charge of the boy, probably a little mildly sexist, where you, you care about the boy more so than the girl, uh, and he gets that I don't know if it's called a T nine flyer, but that little ship he's playing with in Episode yeah. Four, and he actually gives it to Luke, or you assume mm-hmm. because. You know, but Owen threw it back, so I assume before the end of the show, and that's going to be in Luke's possession where he, he plays Ben. Yeah, but, yeah, because, like, well, if you actually, in the first, well, episode four, um, there is a part where you actually see all of his toys yeah. with all the spaceships in the back, and he does play with them yeah. at one point. Um, so that's neat. I think that was kind of cool. So you then, like, that kind of fleshes it out, like, oh, yeah. that was probably Obi-Wan Kenobi giving him all those toys, spaceship toys. And so, um, 
it is interesting. I, I like it. Um, I feel I'm glad that they're kind of going down the, the Leia route yeah. because... You don't a, know any of them, right? Yeah. Well, it's like we know Obi-Wan and Luke never met. Yeah. So they can't really change that shit. Right. And so it's like Leia is a little more up in the air a little. Well, it makes sense because if you don't have that interaction, you're going to heavily, uh, heavily assume that this series would be just a book of Boba for Obi-Wan staying on this planet and that's it. Yeah. Now this is the ability to go off world and do whatever and yes, Boba Fett has traveled but this makes it more intriguing and, and it makes the series more understandable because like, yeah, it's six episodes you can make it really short and detail or you can flesh it out. Uh, having him work with Leia makes a lot more sense and whatever other things to create the Rebels uh cause and, and power them up on the down low, if you will. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I really liked and that caused me the, the feels and the great buy-in is at the ending of episode two, where it's literally almost no verbal lines, it's just the face acting from Ewan McGregor, yeah. and he realizes that his Luke best is friend is alive. Yeah. Er, and, Luke. No. Okay. Anakin. <laughs> Anakin. And then he you know, flashes the bath tank and, you know, King Christian's eyes just pop open. You're like, holy crap. Yeah. Well, it's like, because he basically, you know, he always thought he was dead, and then now he's opening himself up to the thought that he's alive. Yeah. And he reaches out, it seems, by accident, yeah. and Vader catches it. Yeah, so this is probably going to lead to the, the rest of the last four episode arc, other than, unless he's going to be uh, planet hopping with Leo for the next two and a half episodes. Because I predict it's going to be the daddy daughter thing for a minute. I, like I, I don't know because it's what six episodes. Yeah, so there's four left. So yeah, I I predict it's going to be kind of like more of a like the Leia the the fun shenanigans of Leia and Obi Wan, and then then it'll eventually end. He'll drop off, and then that's when Vader enters because he's done so much shit now, and he's put himself out there. Yeah. And now Vader's trying to find them. Right. So that's my predict prediction. And then, but uh, th my thing is, is it's like, that's why I kind of go back on that mind, the mind trick thing, yeah. scrambling their brains. Sure. Because I thought, I was like, well, maybe, the, maybe he scrambles Vader's brain to forget everything that transpired. Yeah. I mean, because to me, I kind of feel like, uh, I mean, uh, to, to, to break continuity but patching it up all in a nice yeah, little, exactly, nice little, yeah, yeah, you know, having your cake and eating it too. <laughs> so, you know, we're excited for the next four episodes. Uh, I'm personally excited for Ahsoka as well, just because I'm a huge Rosario Dawson fan. Yeah. Um, and so we'll see how this goes. You know, we have also technically what She Hulk and uh, Miss Marvel also coming out this year. Um, we'll be touching upon these, um, you know, feel free to comment, you know, yeah. and then like and subscribe as always, you know, tell friends. You know, we thank you so much for getting us up to 200 subscribers. Yeah. And let's try to get 300. All right. Yeah. Doing it. We'll next, next milestone. Right. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Later. Later.